They're a nuisance, barked Grisk, a towering reptilian figure, his scales bristling with irritation. Everywhere they go, chaos follows. They were a primitive species barely a century ago, and now they're everywhere, poking their noses into matters far beyond their understanding. Indeed, they're like Verxian vermin. Quipped a slender, almost translucent being, its voice hissing through the air, always scurrying about, causing trouble where there was none. A round of murmurs and clicks followed, with several delegates nodding in agreement. Humans had, over the past few decades, become a persistent thorn in the side of the galactic order. Despite their relatively recent entry into the interstellar community, they seemed to have a knack for being at the center of everything. Wars, diplomatic incidents, exploration missions gone awry. Humans were always involved. They are a lesser species, yet they act with such arrogance, Gris continued, slamming his clawed fist on the table. They have no regard for the ancient treaties, the balance of power, or the delicate peace we have maintained for eons. Perhaps we should simply eliminate the problem, suggested another delegate, his voice dripping with malice, a few well-placed strikes, and we could remove their presence from the galaxy altogether. There was a pause, the air in the chamber growing thick with tension. Even among those who despised the humans, the idea of wiping out an entire species was distasteful. The Council was not a body known for its mercy, but it also had a reputation to uphold. Genocide was bad for business. No, said a calm, yet authoritative voice from the far end of the chamber. All heads turned to look at Exilia, the oldest and wisest member of the Council. Her eyes, deep and ancient, shimmered with knowledge beyond comprehension. We will not resort to such barbarism. Humans are curious. Unpredictable. Yes, but not without potential. Potential for what? More destruction, Grisk spat, his voice dripping with contempt. Potential for growth, Exilia countered. They are not like us. They are adaptable, resourceful, and driven by something we do not fully understand. They survive against all odds, often in the most unexpected ways. Survive! They thrive on chaos, shouted another delegate. Every time we think we have them contained, they find a way to slip through our fingers. Xillia nodded slowly, acknowledging the truth in the statement, Yes, they do. But that is why we must be careful. Humans are not to be underestimated. We must watch them. Yes, but not with the intent to destroy. Instead, we should learn from them. Learn. What could we possibly learn from those barbarians? Grisk sneered. A small smile played on Exilia's lips. How to survive. The chamber fell silent as her words sank in. The debate was far from over, but Zillia's words had given the Council something to think about. The humans were a problem, yes, but they were also a puzzle, a puzzle that the Council had yet to fully understand. And until they did, it would be unwise to make any rash decisions. For now, the humans would continue to be monitored, their actions scrutinized. But the Council would tread carefully. Humans were, after all, more resilient than they appeared. The Council's deliberation was cut short by a sudden alert. Distress signal from a human colonist ship. The captain's voice crackled through the speakers. They've gone off course and crashed on Moon X-13 in the Cracksand territory. The chamber erupted in chaotic noise. Moon X-13 was deep within hostile territory, claimed by the Kraxan, a species notorious for their ruthless enforcement of borders. They were not known for mercy towards trespassers, and the humans had unwittingly landed right in the middle of their domain. This is, is exactly what I was talking about, Gris growled, his eyes flashing with anger. Humans blundering into dangerous situations, dragging us into their mess. 
They're not our problem, another delegate chimed in, waving a dismissive tentacle. Let the Krexan deal with them. It's not worth the risk of an interplanetary incident. Xilia, however, leaned forward, her gaze fixed on the hologram. How many humans are aboard that ship? Approximately 200 colonists, the captain reported. Mostly families, civilians. The chamber fell silent again. The thought of leaving innocent lives at the mercy of the Krexan, who were known for their brutality, did not sit well with many of the delegates, but neither did the prospect of a confrontation with the Krexan Empire. We can't just leave them to die, one delegate finally spoke up. But if we intervene, the Krexan will see it as an act of war. And if we do nothing... The humans will retaliate when they find out we left their people to die. Exilia added, her tone measured. Either way, we risk conflict. Grisk slammed his fist on the table again, this time in frustration. Then what do you propose we do? And what do you propose we do? Exilia, send in a rescue team and hope the cracks and don't notice. Xilia met his gaze evenly, precisely. A murmur rippled through the chamber. It was a risky move, but it was also the only option that might prevent a larger conflict. Very well. The head of the council finally declared, We will assemble a small, covert team. Their mission will be to extract the humans and avoid detection at all costs. He didn't need to finish the sentence. The consequences were clear. Preparations were made quickly. The rescue team, composed of some of the most skilled operatives from various species, was briefed and dispatched. Their ship, equipped with the latest in stealth technology, would slip into cracks and territory unnoticed and retrieve the stranded humans. But as the team approached Moon X-13, they couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The Krexan were known for their paranoia and vigilance. A single mistake could mean the end of the mission, and potentially the beginning of a galactic war. As the rescue ship descended towards the moon, the operatives steeled themselves for the task ahead. They had been trained for the most dangerous missions, but this one felt different. The stakes were higher the risks greater. But as the ship touched down on the moon's surface, the operatives were greeted with an unexpected sight. The landing zone, instead of being surrounded by cracks and forces, was eerily quiet. Too quiet. Something's not right, the team leader muttered, scanning the area. Where are the cracks, Anne? The operatives fanned out, moving cautiously towards the human ship. It was a mess, scorched, battered, and barely holding together. But as they approached, they heard something unexpected. Laughter. The team exchanged puzzled glances before carefully opening the hatch. Inside, they found a group of humans, battered but alive, and seemingly in good spirits. One of them, a tall man with a makeshift bandage around his head, looked up and grinned. About time you guys showed up he said, his voice tinged with humor. We were just about to take over the moon. The operative stared in disbelief. What happened here? The man shrugged. Oh, the Krexan tried to take us out. But we fought back. Turns out they're not so tough when you punch them in the face. Or hit them with a wrench. One of the operatives blinked. You fought off the Krexan with your bare hands. And a few tools, the man replied nonchalantly. They're not that different from us. Just a bit uglier. The team leader shook his head in disbelief. You? Took over the moon? Pretty much, the man replied. Looking around at the makeshift fortifications the humans had set up. They ran off after a while. Didn't like getting hit, I guess. The operatives exchanged incredulous looks. The humans had not only survived, they had somehow turned the tables on the crack sand, using nothing more than their fists and whatever they could find. 
We should probably get out of here before they come back. The man added, as if the whole situation was no big deal. The operatives couldn't argue with that. They quickly began evacuating the colonists, still trying to wrap their minds around what had just happened. Humans, it seemed, were even more unpredictable than they had thought. As the rescue ship lifted off, carrying the colonists to safety, the operatives couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and confusion. The humans had done the impossible, again. And this time, they hadn't just survived. They had won. The rescue team returned to the council chamber, the humans safe and sound. But the mood in the chamber was far from triumphant. The delegates were still reeling from the news. Humans had fought off the Kraxan with makeshift weapons and their bare hands, and they had won. Grisk was the first to speak, his voice low and filled with disbelief. How is that possible? The team leader, still trying to process what he had witnessed, could only nod. It seems the humans are more resourceful than we gave them credit for. Xilia's eyes sparkled with a mixture of amusement and respect. Resourceful indeed. They managed to accomplish what even our best warriors might have struggled with. But how? Grisk insisted still unable to comprehend the situation. The Krexan are one of the most feared species in the galaxy. How did the humans defeat them? The team leader hesitated, then shrugged. They fought back. They didn't give up. They improvised. The chamber fell silent as the delegates processed this information. The humans had once again proven themselves to be an anomaly a species that defied expectations, that refused to play by the rules of the galaxy. They are dangerous, one of the delegates finally murmured, his voice tinged with both fear and respect. Xilia nodded slowly. Yes, but not in the way we originally thought. Their danger lies not in their technology or their numbers, but in their spirit. They are adaptable, and above all, they are survivors. So what do we do now? Another delegate asked, his tone cautious. Xilia leaned back in her chair, her gaze distant as she considered the question. We do nothing, she finally said. The humans have proven that they can handle themselves. They don't need our help, and they don't need our interference. But what if they become a threat? Grisk asked his voice still filled with suspicion. Xilia smiled. A slow, knowing smile. And then we will cross that bridge when we come to it. But for now, I believe we have more to gain by observing them than by trying to control them. The council members exchanged uncertain glances, but none could argue with Exilia's logic. The humans had proven themselves to be formidable, and it would be unwise to provoke them further. The humans are not our enemies, Exilia continued, her voice firm. They are a part of this galaxy now, whether we like it or not. And as long as they continue to respect our laws and our boundaries, we have no reason to fear them. Gris grumbled something under his breath, but he didn't argue further. The rest of the council members slowly nodded in agreement. The decision was made. Humans would be left to their own devices, for now. As the meeting adjourned, Exilia remained in her seat, her thoughts lingering on the humans. They were indeed a puzzle, one that she was eager to understand. But for now, she would simply watch and wait. As the council chamber emptied, a small smile played on her lips. The humans had once again defied the odds, and in doing so, they had earned a new level of respect from the galactic community. But Exilia knew that this was only the beginning. The humans were far from ordinary, and their presence in the galaxy would continue to be felt for years to come. 
and as she rose from her seat, she couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. The humans were unpredictable, yes, but they were also fascinating. And she had a feeling that this was not the last time they would surprise the galaxy. For now, however, she would allow them to bask in their victory. They had earned it, after all. And who knew? Perhaps one day, the galaxy would come to see humans not as a threat, but as valuable allies. But that was a question for another day. For now, Exilia was content to simply watch and wait, knowing that the humans would continue to surprise them all. And as she left the chamber, she couldn't help but chuckle to herself. Humans, always in the middle of everything, always causing trouble.